and welcome back to my YouTube channel or hello for the first time if you are new here. Thanks for joining me. So today is all about trousers. I did a comprehensive denim guide not too long ago and it went down so well that I thought I would continue the theme into different styles of trousers. So today we have kind of do's and don'ts of the slouchy trousers. Now I will preface this again, I know I've said it before, but the do's and don'ts are just as a general guide. Of course, wear what you want, it's fashion, it's fun. But I think if you want to dig a bit deeper into fashion and style, um, and really just find out what suits and flatters you or the best ways to wear things to flatter you, then these are just general rules um, that you can take on board and follow. And hopefully the aim is to make your life a lot easier when getting dressed. So slouchy trousers, let's talk about those and let's kind of explain them first. So I've got two examples on the rail. These ones are actually both weekend and beyond. I'll be showing you a couple of different ones in the video as well. Just for an example, this is what I would call a slouchy trouser. So this is kind of all the way down to the floor and it's loose pretty much all the way down. And this is also quite loose on the waist as well. So it's not super tight and fitted, um, but it, I mean, it comes in at the waist a bit, of course, to help it stay up. Um, but for me, I personally find them really, really comfortable for one, but also pretty flattering when worn in the right way too. So they just come all the way down, right to the floor. I mean, there's no exact length for them to finish out. If you want them to go slightly past your shoe, that's fine. If you want them to fall a little bit uh, above your shoe, that works too. And then these trousers, again, they're just exactly the same shape. They just go right down. They skim all your thigh, they skim your knee, and they kind of skim over your ankle as well. So that's how I would define a slouchy trouser um, before we get started. Now in terms of body shapes, I really do think these lend themselves quite well to a lot of different shapes. So I think if you're a bit more of an hourglass shape, you can really get along with these by defining your waist a bit more. Um, and then also if you're more of an inverse triangle or a bit more of an apple shape, where um, your kind of weight balance is more on the top than on your legs. And I think you can make these work as well because you can really balance out your figure a bit more, especially if you're an inverted triangle with maybe broader shoulders, you can use the slouchier waist to make that more of an even balanced look on the eye. And then again, if you're more of a pear shape um, and carry the weight a bit more on the bottom than the top, again, I think you could make this work on the flip side by these just kind of really skim over um, and are so flattering on the leg, I find, and then balance it out, cinch in the waist, and then balance it out on the top, maybe with some shoulder pads, um, and something a bit more structured, a puff sleeve, and then cinched in waist, and then slouchy trousers can be really flattering for that shape as well. So I do think they lend themselves to quite a few different shapes. So hopefully this video will help you kind of style them with your existing clothes, with different types of shoes, um, and really kind of get a feel for how to wear them. So let's get into it. So the first way I'm going to talk about the slouchy trousers are for a casual look. So you can see here that I've styled my weekend and beyond trousers, these ones actually, with some trainers. Now the reason I think this works is because the trainers are quite light, they're not too clunky, not too heavy, and they've got a nice round toe um, that just feels, I think it is just that feeling of lightness because the trousers are quite heavy feeling and looking, there's a lot of fabric there and it goes right down. So to balance that out with something a little bit lighter, the round toe, it's not, you know, a really chunky, dark, heavy shoe. It's a light color as well. So I think that really works with this. And then I've just paired it with my Arquette belt, again, to cinch in that waist. I think really works if you want to make these very flattering. Um, and then a just a round neck jumper on top. Again, this is slightly more of a fitted jumper. So if you are conscious of the amount of fabric that these trousers have, um, then go for something a little bit more fitted on top. And I think the longer sleeves balances out the longer trousers as well. If you are looking for recommendations, the ones I'm wearing in this video, honestly, I couldn't recommend enough for the fabric, the quality. Um, I wear mine to death. You may have noticed this on my Instagram. Um, but these Weekend and Beyond ones are just amazing. These are the Roberts pants, but I think they also do different versions. And then my Marseille London ones, um, which I'll be showing you again 
great quality. I can't recommend that brand enough. Um, I know I talk about them a lot, but I really do get my wear out of them. And then I've got some jeans from Stradivarius. They do great uh, denim, so I could recommend highly all of the pieces that I'm showing in this video. I just wanted to show as well the contrast of what I probably wouldn't do with these trainers. Particularly, I mean, I'm not saying this look doesn't work. I actually quite like this look. Um, but I think in terms of being really, really flattering, elongating, I would probably stay away from chunky trainers. And I've just got this example here for you. Um, I think it can look very oversized and clunky, clunky, um, and maybe a little bit off balance as well. Um, these trainers are from Preview. I really love these, and I think they lend themselves well to a bit more of a tailored crop cigarette trouser, where you've got that balance of the leg, you've got the ankle on show, kind of take away from all the heavy fabric, you would have more of an ankle on show. So that's how I would probably wear these trainers instead, because it can look a little bit out of balance with the size trousers and then the clunky trainer as well so that's probably what I would avoid if I was going for a more casual look with these trousers let's talk about oversized on oversized now I actually did a whole reel on this on my Instagram it's at Lydia Jane Tomlinson there'll be a direct link to it in the description box underneath I do lots of short reels on there with tips just like this but in a very condensed way and there are also different tips to this so I try and do a lot of varied content but I did a whole reel on how to wear oversized so if you are a bit more interested in digging into the oversized trend then go and have a look on there um, because it's kind of the flattering ways to do oversized. Um, so here we've got oversized and oversized. I am wearing this Arquette jumper, it's not available anymore but I'll try and find something similar or an alternative style. I know some of you say that the links I find aren't always exact replicas of what I'm wearing. That is because nobody produces the exact same pieces over and over again. Um, it's pretty much impossible to find an almost exact carbon copy of um, what I'm wearing. So if I do link something, it's more of an alternative than like a match to it. It's something that I think kind of fits a similar bill. So I just thought I'd note that. But basically here in this cutaway, I'm wearing this oversized jumper and this is how I would not do oversized and oversized. And that is by wearing it very much loose and open along with the loose trousers. Your body is just totally lost and totally drown in this fabric. I know some people really pull off this very, very oversized look, but I think if you want to make it more flattering, um, you need to first of all think about tucking a bit of the oversized in. Now, a way I would personally do this, and I kind of show it in the cutaway, is by tucking half, or the kind of front half, of your jumper in, so you kind of tuck that into your waistband, kind of fold it over first, and then tuck the folded bit into your front waistband and then leave the rest of it hanging out loose behind but then just fold up the back bit and um, you can just kind of roll that up and it pretty much stays there like that you can just kind of tweak it as you go along but it does pretty much stay like this I find um, and you can do the same look with oversized shirts if you feel like a shirt can't be fully tucked in just tuck the front bit in and then kind of under roll the back if that makes sense um, and instantly this look becomes so much more flattering you can see your waistline then it drags the uh, kind of eye right up to your waist rather than cutting it off at the thigh where the jumper was before and then of course with oversize I would belt it again talking about that cinching in the waist look Belting something just completely can transform your outfit. So I would add a belt to it just to create a little bit more definition. And I wanted to show kind of the whole hog of this look, how you can take this fully oversized but still make it flattering. So what I've done is put this oversized trench coat on the top. So we've got a lot of fabric going on here. We've got the starch trousers, the oversized trench. So something else that I would do, and it works in the same way as the belt, one is roll the sleeves up so you can see a bit more um, kind of definition on the arm and contrast of the fabric on your arm. Um, but next I would put a crossbody bag over. Again, it just creates that slight um, drawing in of the fabric. 
it pulls it in a little bit just to define your figure a little bit more underneath the fabric. I'm not saying it does it in the same way as a belt, a belt really does cinch you in, but that crossbody bag can just give an extra element of definition. So that's how I would do a full oversized look with these slouchy trousers. So let's talk about how to do boots with these slouchy trousers. I do find that boots are quite difficult with this and for me, in winter generally, with boots, if you are going for something slightly slouchier, I would go for something a little bit more cropped and a little bit more tapered at the bottom just so that you can tuck them into your boots. So that's really what I would do generally, but if you did want to wear these trousers with boots, I think avoid a round clunky toe boot um i'm showing you here how this doesn't work it's just too heavy i think the roundness and chunkiness just kind of disrupts the uh, elegance of the trousers and kind of stops them short and i just don't think it really works and the same rule applies for wearing the darker boots on the bottom with an all light outfit and I think this applies kind of across the board but it can look very bottom heavy if you've got some dark boots so instead what I would do is go for the colour sandwich rule now you've probably heard me talk about this a lot but basically I would go for something darker on the top like this jumper and coat I'm wearing here and what I've done with this coat as well is made sure it's quite long and elongating um, to kind of counteract what a boot can do and that it can kind of shorten you a bit so the longer coat elongates you a little bit and then what I've done is paired it with a pointier toe boot. I'm not saying they need to be seriously pointy but something a little bit pointier um, again it just like I was talking about the kind of elegance and elongation that's what it does it just kind of drags it right down um, and there's a little bit more flattering and then you can see that the black from the boots um, balances nicely with the black from the top. So let's talk about how I would do these trousers in the evening. I definitely think you can wear these in the evening. In fact, I would preferably go for these in the evening, especially if you're going out for a meal and you want something a little bit more comfortable on. These are absolutely the ones to go for and the way I would do this to make them really flattering, a bit more feminine, is by contrasting them with some more delicate pieces. So for example, I'd wear something like a bit more of a strappier sandal, strappy heeled sandal, something very delicate um, and soft. As I'm wearing here, a Zara bodysuit, which again, because it's sleeveless, it's more feminine, it just really juxtaposes these very masculine trousers um, and just, I think, makes them a bit more evening appropriate too, especially with the delicate shoe. And kind of similar to the sandwich idea, um, with a, a kind of lighter, more delicate top on the bottom, then you've got the dark trousers, then you kind of sandwich that with the lighter, more delicate shoes at the bottom. And then you can pair this with some kind of jewellery, some soft necklaces, um, and basically make it a little bit more feminine, evening appropriate, and kind of show off your figure a little bit more too. And another way I've kind of done this look, but with a blazer, if you're kind of looking for a bit more of a layer, um, I'll insert a picture now so that you can see it, but basically I'm wearing um, some really slouchy trousers, I think it's these ones, and I've counteracted that with a crop top. So obviously a little bit more skin on show so you can kind of see your figure underneath the fabric, but then I've gone for the oversized blazer on top of that. And again, you can see with the sandwich rule, I've gone for black strappy shoes to counteract the top with the black blazer and the black top. But I think if you did want to wear a blazer with it, maybe go for something a little bit more like a crop top, or if you don't feel comfortable in a crop top, something a little bit more low neck, just to give you that contrast between the fabric and your skin. And finally, let's talk about slouchy jeans. So these are the ones I'm wearing now from Stradivarius. I also have a pair from Collusion, which are very, very, very similar in color, shape, style. So I'll link those because these are sold out, unfortunately but the other ones are great. I absolutely love those just as much um, and they're the same shape. So 
same rules apply. So slouchy jeans, these ones again go straight to the floor, the loose round all kind of round the leg from the thigh right down to the bottom. And for the first look, um, I paired it with some trainers again, um, because I think jeans lend themselves quite well to trainers, particularly in the autumn season. In the summer, I would definitely do this look with sandals and I think this look would work. But I've tried to go for trainers to show you how I would do it for autumn. And I've got this, the trainers on with the tighter bodysuit. Now for me, I don't think this look works that well. I think it feels a little bit um, young, um, maybe something more of a teenager would wear. I don't feel that sophisticated in this outfit. I think with them being trainers, um, I think they just naturally are more casual. So you need to smarten this look up and basically you need to balance out the trainers again with something on top. So I've gone here for this Pixie Market coat, something like a long smart coat, I think really works with the slouchy. Um, you can still do the long, longer style coat with slouchy definitely because it just kind of draws them in a little bit more. And I think if you are doing these slouchy jeans with trainers, Think about your accessories as well. So here I've gone for this Demelier bag. Again, a little bit more grown up and sophisticated feeling. It's got a bit more structure to it. Um, very much like the coat, it creates that slightly more grown up contrasting feel to the very casual trainers. And that's how I would do such a jeans and trainers. But if you were in a warmer climate, I think I would go for some more strappy sandals, something more delicate to counteract the slouchy jeans. Please don't forget to subscribe whilst I've still got you. Um, we are flying up with subscribers at the moment, so I really, really appreciate it if you have already subscribed. Um, honestly, means so much to me. Always let me know in the comments, suggestions, things you want to see, because I am basically going off what you want to see and know um, and tips I can give you. So definitely leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed, press it now. Um, give me a thumbs up if you did like this video um, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye.